I'm Pat Miller. I'm a master gardener with the DuPage County Extension Service, and I'm also a conservation specialist with Monarch Watch. And today I want to share with you some of the magic and wonders of the monarch butterfly. I hope that you will learn a lot in the next few slides. Monarchs, or Dinus plexippus, are our state insect. Did you even know we had a state insect? And monarchs are so popular that they are the state insect of seven different states. What makes monarchs so amazing is that they have a fixed migration pattern. They have the longest migration of any insect that we know of at this time, where one generation makes the full migration. Monarchs are one of the easiest butterflies to sex. If you look at the monarch at the top, this is a male, and we know that because of the two black dots on its hind wing. The lower photo is that of a female. And as you can see, there are no black dots on the hind wing, and the veining is a bit thicker. We have monarchs here in our, during our summer months from mid-May to very early October. Monarchs are poisonous butterflies, not that they would kill anyone, but they do taste bad, which is why many birds will leave them alone. And they get that poison from the milkweed, which the caterpillars eat. So monarchs, as all insects need help. They are disappearing at an alarming rate. And this is due to loss of habitat. As the human population takes up more and more space, it leaves less and less space for other creatures. Also, more and more insecticides and pesticides are being used, which of course kills insects. The long migration, which is up to 3,000 miles, will also kill any of the weaker members of the monarch family because it's very arduous or hard work to travel 3,000 miles when you are a little tiny butterfly. And of course, they need both larval and nectar food sources. Larval plants are what the caterpillars eat. And of course, in the monarch, this is only members of the milkweed family. Butterflies need some sort of shelter, shrubs, trees, which will break strong winds, allow them a place to spend the night. As butterflies are solar creatures, they need exposure to full sun. And of course, most important is no pesticide use. This is one of the milkweed, which is in Illinois. This is called common milkweed or Asclepia syriaca. This is probably the most favored milkweed plant by the monarchs here in Illinois. And its flower is so fragrant when it is in bloom and you walk by, you just stop and smell. It's so wonderful. This is a lovely photo of just different kinds of nectar plants. There's phlox and yarrow, echinacea. In the front, we have Asclepias tuberosa, which is also called Butterfly milkweed that serves as a great nectar plant and sometimes a host plant as well, a larval plant. Monarchs, as all Lepidoptera, go through what is called complete metamorphosis. This means there are four distinct life stages. They begin their life as an egg laid on the larval plant. In four to five days, that egg will hatch into a caterpillar or larva. And of course, that caterpillar is going to eat almost 24 seven or 14 or more days, eventually becoming a chrysalis. While in the chrysalis stage, it has a huge transformation from a caterpillar or larva into 
the adult butterfly. In 12 to 16 days, the adult butterfly will emerge from the chrysalis. And the adult butterfly lives for about two to six weeks during the summer months. However, monarchs which emerge from their chrysalis at the end of the summer during the month of September, early October, these butterflies are in a state of di diapause, which will allow them to live up to nine months as they have a very long journey ahead of them to travel up to 3,000 miles to the Transvalcanic Mountains in Mexico, in central Mexico. Every monarch begins its life as an egg laid on the bottom of a milkweed leaf. Milkweed is the only plant that a monarch caterpillar will eat. So it's the only plant that the female will lay her eggs on. You can see how absolutely tiny that egg is by the size of my finger, which is a pretty small finger. In five to seven or three to five days, that egg will hatch into an itty titty bitty caterpillar. So this caterpillar is about two days old. And you can see how much of the milkweed leaf it has already eaten by what's been eaten away. Then, after it sheds its skin, it gets this size. And now it's starting to get its stripes too. So from this to this in just a couple days. Every time that the caterpillar needs to grow, it needs to crawl out of its skin because its skin is not flexible and cannot expand. So when it has reached the maximum size that that skin can expand to, or cuticle, it must crawl out of its skin. And this is what happens. It wriggles out of its skin, leaves the old skin or cuticle behind. Most often it will eat the skin or cuticle because there's lots of nourishment and it can pop into the next size. Each size is called an instar and a monarch caterpillar goes through five instars. Now to give you an idea of the size, it grows Let's do a comparison. This is a monarch caterpillar, which is in its fifth instar, which means that it will next become a chrysalis. And it's going to search and search and search for the right place to make its chrysalis. This is often the first time it leaves the milkweed plant. Can you see the size difference? So it grows over 3000 times its original weight. To put that into human terms, if we were born a monarch caterpillar or a monarch egg, by the time we were two weeks old, we would be bigger than a school bus. Now, I don't know about you, but I like to eat. And to me, that would be nirvana, that my only purpose in life is to eat as much as I can possibly eat every single day. And when I get too big for my skin, I just pop out of it and get a new one. And guess what? The final product is I become this beautiful butterfly. So I've put my order in to be reincarnated as either a butterfly or a moth because I would like to eat my way through life. Wouldn't you? So this is a monarch caterpillar in its fifth instar. It's about as big as it's going to get. And at this point, it's going to start looking for a place to make its chrysalis. This is often the first time that the monarch caterpillar will leave the milkweed plant. It will hang upside down, what we call a J, for about 17 to 24 hours. And then it will shed its skin for the last time and become this absolutely gorgeous chrysalis. Looks like a piece of jewelry, doesn't it? Now, scientists have studied these gold spots for years. And what we know is, it's nature's way. You can actually sex a chrysalis, but you can't sex a caterpillar without killing it. And we look at these dots and look for a line. Now, I can't show this to you in a video, but you can research how to sex a caterpillar, um, a chrysalis. It's pretty interesting. It will be a chrysalis for about 10 to 14 days, depending on weather. 
just before it opens, it is going to look like this. The pigmentation of the wings is the last part of the butterfly to develop inside the chrysalis. The day before it opens, you will be able to see the coloration of its wings through the cuticle of the chrysalis. And you know that tomorrow, you will have a beautiful new butterfly. I would like to share with you some of the different organizations that you might be interested in learning more about. Just to let you know, this is a beautiful male monarch drinking nectar out of an Asclepius, which is a milkweed plant. This happens to be Asclepius incarnata, which is swamp milkweed. The University of Minnesota began the monarch larval monitoring project years ago. It's one of the longest running research projects. And you can become part of this by contacting the University of Minnesota or just typing in Monarch Larval Monitoring Project and all of the information will come up. This is one of my very, very favorite websites, Journey North. They not only follow monarchs, but many other species as well. Every week during the migration, they update how far the monarchs have traveled in a very interactive map. They also have what is called a mimic migration, where your class could send letters on butterflies to Journey North. And they send them down to schools in the mountains where the monarchs are overwintering. And in the spring, when the monarchs begin their journey northbound, your class will receive letters on butterflies from the children in the classrooms in Mexico. I've been studying monarchs for 20 years, and I can still learn something every time I go to this website. It is just fantastic. Highly recommend making a visit to Journey North. Another way that one can help monarchs is to become a certified monarch way station. And it's really so simple. It doesn't take a lot of area. It just takes 10 plants of milkweed, at least four different nectar plants. And the sustainable management plan is basically how do you want to maintain this garden without use of chemicals? You can simply go to the Monarch Watch website and learn more about how to become a certified monarch way station. Monarch Watch also runs the tagging program. And over the years, we have learned so much about the migration of monarchs. We still actively tag monarchs through our citizen scientists, which you could be one. Again, you would go to the Monarch Watch website to order the tags, and they will come in the mail along with the sheets to record them. And all of this is now done online, so you don't have to mail anything back to them. This is the example of what a tag looks like. It's very exciting. It's fun. And if one of your tagged monarchs is found in Mexico, you will get a certificate in the mail. So this is what a tagged monarch looks like getting ready for its flight to Mexico. As I said before, on its journey south, on their journey south, they need to drink a lot of nectar. And they are desperately searching for these late fall blooming plants. This plant is goldenrod. And you can see these monarchs are just drinking up all the nectar they can find. It takes a lot of energy to fly all the way south to Mexico from, North, from the United States and Canada. This is what we've learned about the migration of the monarch butterfly. The United States is divided by a very large mountain range, which we know as the Rocky Mountains, which is from Canada all the way into Mexico. The monarchs east of the Rocky Mountains travel to the Transvolcanic Mountain Range in central Mexico. One generation makes this trip. So the monarchs which emerge from their chrysalis in August in the northern ranges to September here in the Midwest, one generation makes this trip. The single butterfly flies this entire way. That single butterfly spends the winter on the trees in the mountains in Mexico. Let's quickly take a trip to Mexico. I took my son 
many years ago. There are some of the photos. Some call this a butterfly blizzard. Can't really buy this at Dairy Queen, but it is amazing to see. Too bad you can't buy it at Dairy Queen. It'd be fun to drive up and say, I'd like a butterfly blizzard. And I open the little window and out fly hundreds of monarchs. That would be exciting. But there literally are millions upon millions of monarchs in one location. Often, there are so many monarchs on one branch that this little tiny insect, which remember weighs less than a paper clip, will weigh, the collective weight will weigh down these branches, often to the point that the branch will break off the tree because there are so many monarchs on one branch. When you look at these branches, it's almost impossible to tell how many monarchs are on any one branch because there are so many. They cluster tightly together. This protects them from any inclement weather. And they will also be motionless when the temperatures are lower because as a solar powered creature, they need warmth to be able to fly. If you look carefully, you can see that almost everything you're seeing is covered with monarch butterflies. And look carefully at the trunk of the trees because they are also covered with the monarch butterfly. So we call butterfly bark because you can't even see the trunk of the tree. It is just solid monarch butterflies. Because the entire Eastern population of monarchs is in one location at one time, this is an insect that we can monitor the population. As you saw, we can't count individual butterflies. There are too many and it's too difficult. But what is done is helicopters fly overhead and they take photos of the forests. As you can see, Many of these trees are orange. They are orange not because they're dying. They are orange because they are covered in monarch butterflies. What the scientists will do is look at this photo and measure how many hectares, which is a form of land measurement such as an acre is, and determine how many hectares are covered in monarch butterflies. This is how we measure the population of the monarch from year to year. As the temperatures begin to warm, the monarchs will begin to leave the trees, often looking for moisture or water, and they will drink as much as they can before they begin their flight northbound. The reverse migration is the opposite of the southern migration. They will make their way to Texas, which is where the milkweed is emerging in the spring, mate, lay their eggs. The butterflies which overwintered in Mexico will die after laying their eggs, but their offspring, those eggs which become butterflies, will be the butterflies that go farther north into Missouri, Illinois, Wisconsin, and another generation will make it up into the northern ranges into southern Canada. This is a picture of a female monarch laying her egg on a milkweed plant. And as you can see, she takes her abdomen and literally glues an egg to the underside of a milkweed leaf. As the milkweed is often quite small when they have returned to the United States or Mexico, you can sometimes find multiple eggs on one little teeny tiny plant. Here we can find two eggs on this little emerging milkweed plant. Just being aware of insects and monarchs and what they need is a huge start. If you decide to become more, more involved, then you could think about planting some milkweed or nectar plants. Want to do more? Think about becoming a monarch way station. Really work hard at encouraging adults to eliminate the use of pesticide. Talk to others about what you've learned. And there are multiple citizen scientist projects that you could get involved with, which is very exciting, exciting thing to do. Citizen scientists provide so much data to scientists today, and they are the eyes and ears where scientists can't be everywhere. The citizen scientists fill in that gap and give them so much information they could never 
collect on their own. I hope you've learned some interesting facts about the monarch and perhaps have a greater appreciation for not only this insect, but all insects and all of nature around us. Remember, we're the stewards of the earth. Enjoy, take care, and get outside.